Hello, everybody. Welcome to Experience Jesus with AVJ, Apostle Victor James. I'm excited and I give thanks to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus for giving us another opportunity to be able to fellowship together and break the bread of life together. And you and I know that this bread of life we break regularly on this channel is the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. All right, quickly, two announcements, two quick announcements. Please let me appeal to you to, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please go to YouTube, type Apostle Victor James and press the subscription button. I will be so encouraged if you did that. Thank you for telling others as well. Tell your loved ones, your families, your friends, everybody to go to YouTube and just press that subscription button. Type in Apostle Victor James. Thank you. Amen. Now, second announcement. The Lord has... Um, called me in this generation to mentor ministers, believers, men and women, and uh, provide, by the grace of God, spiritual covering, you know, for as many as is sending to me. And believe me, the Lord has sent to me so many from all over the globe, from everywhere in the world, and right here in Nigeria, and specifically in Lagos. And we meet every two Mondays. It is called AVJ, Jesus Gospel Ministers Fellowship. I pastor that fellowship personally. AVJ, Jesus Gospel Ministers Fellowship. We meet every two Mondays. I mean, <laughs> you just need to attend one for you to see the kind of dimension the Spirit of God takes us in the Word, in prayer, and in, um, in, in fellowship. You know, you need to be a part of it. In these last days, don't walk alone. Whether you're a pastor, an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, teacher, bishop, elder, deacon, deaconess, you know, whatever you do in the body of Christ, you need to be part of this mentorship and spiritual covering fellowship that the, great, that the Lord God, in Jesus' name, has given me grace to pastor. Now, if you want to know our next Monday meeting, our next Monday fellowship, you know, uh, there's a number you need to call, you know, to, to get that. It's plus 234-803-0718006. I'm going to take that again. Plus 234-803-0718006. You need to call so as to know the next fellowship. Now, for those of you who are not in Nigeria, you're not in Lagos, Anywhere you are in Nigeria or all over the world, you can still hook up because um, every two Mondays that we meet in the fellowship, um, we do broadcast it live. That's why I say you can call so that you know the next date and then you can be a part of it. And then if the Lord is sending you to me, you know, you can also use that number to reach me and to let me know. God bless you until I hear from you concerning that. You are blessed in Jesus' name. All right. <clears throat> Let's hit the ground running. Concerning this, um, f uh, 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 today's bread that we are breaking, which is the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you know. Um, um, it's more or less a continuation of our last teaching, you know, broadcast. You know, but I, I wouldn't call it, a continuation, but it's more or less, it's, it, it, that's what, it's more or less, you know. So, but let's go on in, 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 you know, in the light of what the Holy Ghost wants us to see, acknowledge, and walk in, in this episode, you know. Because <clears throat> as the coming of Jesus is getting nearer and nearer, well, we need to keep, you know, ourselves in line with the scripture, sound doctrine, word of, word of God, you know, so as to be sure we are properly positioned as Christians in this present world. All right? So, <clears throat> let's start with John chapter 6, verse 28 to 29. The book of John chapter 6, verses 28 and 29. Glory be to God. Now, watch this. This is very important. This is very, very important. He says, you know, they came to Jesus and to ask Jesus a major question. And, and uh, you know, put it in King James, please. 
you know, they, they, they came to Jesus to ask him a major question. And this is the question they asked Jesus. Then said they unto Jesus, unto him, Jesus, what shall we do? What shall we do? What shall we do that we might work the works of God? You know, everybody wants to find out what they need to be doing. What, they, what does God wants me to do? What should I be doing? You know, that God, that, that, that it will be recorded that I'm doing what God wants me to do. Which is a legit question. I mean, it's a question in the heart of everybody. Except anybody whose heart is not really after God. Are you seeing what I'm saying? But in this case, Christianity has not started. This, in, when Jesus was asked this question, Christianity has not started. Nobody was called a child of God. Of course, you know that Israel never called themselves a child of God. They called themselves the servants of God or the slaves of God. That's what the Bible said in Leviticus. The Bible said God told Moses, everyone that came out from Egypt, from that land of bondage, are all my servants. Are you seeing that? That's what he said in Leviticus. Now, when Jesus showed up, he showed up as the son of God. Glory be to God. But Jesus could not make anybody the son of God because he hadn't died. He hadn't offered himself. He hadn't paid this ultimate sacrifice for the separation between man and God. So, in John 15, Jesus referred to his disciples as friends because of their closeness with him. He referred to them as friends. He said, from now on, even though the rest of Israel are still servants, slaves of God. In verse 15 of John 15, he said, I call you no more servants or slaves. I call you friends. You know, and then there is this song. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. You're not supposed to sing that song as a born again Christian. That song is not for the people of God. Because after Jesus paid the price for sin, after his death, burial, and resurrection, the Bible said in John chapter 1 verse 12, as many as received him by believing in Jesus, he did not give them the power to become the friends of God. But guess what? They became the sons of God. Glory be to God. <laughs> so there is something greater and higher than being friends. So you see the sequence. Israel came out of Egypt and God identified them as his, as his, calling them his slaves, servants. When Jesus came, he came as the son of God and made the disciples his friends. Are you seeing that? So he called them friends. But after he died, buried and resurrected, Jesus never called anybody friends no more. He gave them power, the privilege and the right to become the sons of God. So in Galatians chapter 4, the Bible now said from verse 6, 7, and 8, he said very clearly, because you are sons, because you and I, we are not just servants of God or slave of God. We are not friends of God. He said, because ye are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. Are you seeing that? All right, so now that you are a son of God, because Jesus was trying to answer them here very specifically, you know, okay, I've explained that in John 15, 15. Henceforth, I call you no more servants. You see that? He said, for the servant knoweth not what the, uh, the, the Lord doeth, but I have called you friends, you know. So in John 1, 12, like, like I said, you know, uh, that he let just rush along so that I, I won't take, I just decided to just say that real quickly, you know. All right. Now that you are a son of God, or well, let's go back to that John first, that John chapter uh, 6, the question that Jesus was asked, you know, John 6, verse 28 and 29, because we need to understand it in context. Are you seeing that? It needs to be understood in context. So they asked Jesus, what they said unto Jesus, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Now, this is an unbeliever that is asking. This is somebody that is not born again or people who are not born again, who are not children of God that are asking. So Jesus said in his response to them in verse 29, put verse 29. 
He now says, look at Jesus' answer and response to them. Jesus, Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God. Answering their question, that you believe on him whom he had sent. So Jesus made it very clear. God's work for anybody that is not born again, his work is that you should believe. God's work for you as an unbeliever, as somebody that is not born again, is that you should believe in the Lord Jesus. Are you seeing that? Very clear. Now, Jesus is not talking to born again Christians. This verse of scripture is not for born again Christians. It's for unbelievers. You don't need to burn candle. You, need to, you don't need to punish yourself. You don't need to stress your life. You don't need to offer any sacrifice. You don't need to do nothing. Just believe on Jesus Christ, whom God has sent for the salvation of humanity, of mankind. Now, the unfortunate thing here, if we are not careful, is that some Christians now think that this John chapter 6, verse 28 and 29, is talking to born again Christians. He's talking to those who have already believed in Jesus. No, no, no. Not at all. A thousand times no. You see that? Because it is clear the people that came to ask Jesus what they need to do to walk the works of God, to do the works of God. And Jesus gave them a clear answer. Believe on Jesus, on him, whom God the Father has sent. Alright? So once you believe and you become saved, you become born again. This is what happens. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 19 says in GNT translation. Ephesians 2 19 in GNT translation. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 19. Once you believe in Jesus by making him your Lord and Savior. Ephesians 2 19 says GNT translation. He says, so then you Gentiles are not foreigners or strangers any longer. Are you seeing that? You are now citizens together with God's people and members of the family of God. So once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior by believing in Jesus and that God raised him from the dead, you become a member of the family of God. Are you seeing that? Glory be to God. So you are now a member of of the family of God. You are now a child of God. You are now a son of God. You are now of God. Are you seeing that? By believing in Jesus. So, now that you are now a member of the family of God, a citizen, no more a foreigner or a stranger to God and to his family. That thing Jesus said in John chapter 6 that we read is fulfilled. You have worked the work of God, which is to believe. So, by believing in Jesus, you have been made a member of the family of God. Hallelujah. Are you understanding that? Alright. That's very, that, that, that's as much as, but now that you are a member of the family of God, now that you are no more a foreigner or a stranger, you are now a child of God, a son of God, a member of the people, the household, of God. The Bible said in Ephesians chapter 2, <clears throat> this same Ephesians 2, in verse 10, NIV, let's look at it in NIV translation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ephesians 2 10, in the NIV translation, look at what it says. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Watch this. <clears throat> NIV translation, please. Ephesians 2 10. It says, oh, it's okay if you want to see it. It says, For we are God's workmanship. We that have become members of his family, his household, we that are no more foreigners or strangers, we that are now children of God, we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. You see, this works, yeah, is different from the works that the Bible talks about, or Jesus was giving us an answer in John chapter 6. These are two different works. All right. The first one is to believe in Jesus. The second one is the one that God has for us to do 
as members of his household, as, as, as his children. Are you seeing that? <clears throat> Glory be to God. So now that you are a born again Christian, there are things that God has for you. There are works that God has for you as members of the body of Christ, as believers. You know, somebody sent me a message on... Um, uh, God, somebody sent me a message on... Um, uh, uh, on, on Facebook as a comment in our last administration, our last discussion. And, uh, you know, I, I guess the person is trying to ask a question, you know, <clears throat> because the person listened to the teaching, I guess, and then the person said, uh, the works of God is to believe on Jesus Christ. You know, uh, you know. so I, <clears throat> I'm guessing the person is trying to say, all you just need is just to believe on Jesus. No, that's it. Now, if that is the case, if that is the case, Ephesians 2.10 will not have, there will be no need for it in the Bible. Because this works the Bible said, <clears throat> God prepared them in advance for us. The work were prepared for us, not the one that Jesus did for us. These are works that we have to engage in. Are you seeing that? This is, these are, there are works that God has committed to us as his children that we must do in this present world for the kingdom of God. We have to. Now, for the sake of this work being done, are you seeing that? The works that God prepared for us to do before the world began in Christ Jesus, for everyone who will become a child of God, for this work to actually become fulfilled in us, be done, be carried out through us. Yeah? God gave us gifts. Are you getting understanding now? For, for that, those works to be done, God gave us gifts. Are you seeing that? According to his own grace. Now, the Bible said, what, what are these gifts? You know, there are so many of them, but there are a few that I'm going to just show you. In Romans chapter 12, verse 6, 6 to 8, in the NIV translation. Romans 12, verse 6 to 8. <clears throat> Watch this. Because of the works that God has given to us that we should do in this present world as he prepared them for us in advance before we came, before the world began. Now, for these works to actually be carried out and done by us, look at what the Bible said. In Romans chapter 12 verse 6, the Bible said we have different gifts. Why will God want to give you gifts? If there is no need for the gift to be used, why will God want to give his children, you and I, born again Christian, members of his own family, gifts, if those gifts were not expected to be used? Are you seeing that? So, we should be careful not to dwell in ignorance of the truth or of the realities of of our sonship in Christ or membership of the body of Christ. Are you seeing that? All right. He said we have different gifts according to the grace given us. The gift <clears throat> that God, the gift we have is according to the grace that God has given to us. So the reason God gave you grace <clears throat> as a child of God, as members of the body of Christ, as a family member, in the household of God is because of the gift he gave you. A galande. So the grace you have is to walk the gift. The grace you have, the grace God has given to you is to help you walk the gift. Because if you are not given gift that need to be worked, there will be no need for grace. Are you seeing that? He said, we have different gifts. Because of this gift that we have. He said the gift is according to the grace given to us. Are you seeing that? So if you are not doing anything, the grace that is given to you is dormant. That's what the Bible says. Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. 
People who are not doing anything in the kingdom of God, who are not useful at all for the advancement of the kingdom or the advancement of the gospel. The, every one of us has been given grace. This gift of grace is to help walk the gift that God has given to us. Watch this. He said, we have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is to prophesy or is prophesying, he said, let him use it in proportion of his faith. If the gift you have received from God is to prophesy, the reason you are giving that gift is because there is a grace on your life to work it, to prophesy. All right. Look at the next one. Verse 7. Woo! Glory be to God. I feel excited because this is powerful. Verse 7. If it is serving, are you seeing him? If the gift God gave you is to serve, don't try to be a leader because the grace on your life will not respond or work. It's not activated until you function within the gift that you are given. Because the grace that God gave you and I, it is targeted at enhancing, enabling, and working the gift. So he said, if your own is to serve, if the gift God gave you is to serve, the reason he gave you the gift to serve is because the grace you have is to make serving effective, profiting, glorious, precious, easy. Are you seeing that? So if you, if you left serving into being a leader of some kind, are you seeing that? That grace on your life will become dormant will become useless. That's why you see that a lot of Christians are suffering. A lot of Christians are miserable. A lot of Christians are going through all kinds of pains and hardship. You see, according to God, yeah, or, or let, me, let me backtrack. According to the scripture, the reason a woman was created now, this is not targeting anybody. I'm just trying... I, I think the Holy Ghost brought that in my spirit right, right now. The reason a woman was created was not primarily for God. Of course, that's part of it. The reason a woman was created was to be a help mate for the man. So you see, what God... The grace God put on a woman is to service the man. So when a woman refuses to serve the man, yeah, the grace on her life becomes dormant. She begins to struggle. She begins to have inner frustration. She will fight. She will quarrel. She will nag. She will destroy things. The, it, it, those things are a byproduct of the non-functioning grace that is upon her. Very simple. I would to God you understand what I'm talking about. If the gift God gave you is to be an usher in the church, don't try to be a Sunday school teacher. Because you can teach does not make mean you should be a Sunday school teacher. Because there is a gift of grace. There is a grace that is at work in your life. That grace always answers to every time you yield you go in the direction of the gift that God has given to you. Look at, he said, if, if, if the gift you have is to serve, he said, let him serve. Just stay there. Keep serving. You will be amazed. You will be brought before greatness. You will be brought rather into greatness by just serving. You don't have to be the leader. I know of a lot of pastors who are struggling. You, you know why? It's not necessarily because God hates them or they did something wrong. They are, these are anointed pastors and called of God. You see, but their calling as a pastor is to serve as pastors under a pastor. But they don't want to start. No, very few people want to serve under somebody else. Everybody wants to start his own ministry. Everybody wants to start his own church. Because you can quote scripture and you, have, you can preach very well. It just naturally means you should go and start your own church. But that's not what it should be. 
Are you seeing what I'm saying? It's like in the hospital. You know, in the hospital, every hospital has doctors. But guess what? It is not everybody working in the hospital that are doctors. There are nurses. There are, so, there are some nurses that have, uh, you know, has served as a nurse for an upward of 20, 30 years. For 30 years. Some have, have seen a nurse for 32 years. For 35 years. These nurses, or group of nurses, have so, they have so learned about medicine that we, if there is no doctor and they find themselves in a remote village where there is no doctor, they can prescribe drugs for minor medical issues. They can, I'm telling you, they can prescribe drugs. As a matter of fact, <laughs> you would think that there are, they, they are doctors. Is it but she, that nurse is still not a doctor. You see what I'm saying? So the same thing in the house of God. It is not everybody who is called to be a leader. You can lead by serving under somebody else. No matter how powerful a nation is, no matter how many intelligent people there are in a nation, there can only be one president or one king. I'm telling you. And then you have secretaries or ministers. Are you seeing that? Now, watch this. He said, if your gift is teaching, let him teach. You, you see, I have the grace to teach. The grace to enhance teaching. That's why my teachings, yeah, no matter how confused you are, no ma even if you don't like the truth, if you sit down to hear my teachings, along the line, there will be a witness in your spirit, in your heart, that the teaching of Apostle Victor James is the truth. I don't, I don't, I, I don't waste my precious time trying to bring up, you know, controversial teachings, you know, because I, I want to be controversial, and then that way I will be known. I know a, a few friend of mine who says you, you need to you know, go controversial. That way, you will become popular. You will go viral quickly, you know. That's why I see that some of my friends, you know, uh, you know, unfortunately, are preaching that there is no hell. One even said in the midst of his teaching, he said there is no Satan. Satan is the imagination of anybody's evil thought. Rubbish, nonsense. And then the thing went viral. Now he is known everywhere because of that. I'm not going to go into that. I, I, never. God forbid. Because I'm going to, I know that I'm going to stand before the Lord Jesus someday to give account of my teachings. You see, so the gift I have is to dissolve doubt, to bring understanding. As I'm teaching, you will understand. I remember one of my son, Apostle God's word, he's a beautiful soul, you know. That's why I'm calling his name. He's still my son, you know. <laughs> he's a minister, he's a pastor, he pastor his own church, you know. He's a, he's a senior minister in his own church, you know. Um, the first time he came to our fellowship, the minister's fellowship, you know, and he heard me teach, he said he was just getting angry as I was teaching. He was saying to himself, what is this? What is this man saying? He said, but everything I was saying and teaching, I was showing everybody on the screen. I was showing the scriptures for, for them. He said, yeah, but he was still struggling with it, that no, he should, this thing can't be, it shouldn't be so. You know, he said he went back home when we finished. He brought out different Bibles, Bible translations. You know, just trying to see how he can debunk those things that I taught. You know, he said, but every translation he brought out supported what I said, what I taught. You know, until finally, in his heart, his spirit kept telling him, This is the truth. He said he had to respond to his spirit, looking at the scriptures. And then suddenly, freedom came. Enlightenment. You know, th there are some of us that God has given the, that gift of grace. It's a, it's a gift backed by the grace of God. That without me even knowing the question in your heart, as I begin to teach some of my teachings, in, within my teaching, answers will be coming to the questions in your heart. It's a gift that God gave me. 
and there is grace for it. So once I start teaching, that grace kicks in. Are you seeing it? You know, I remember Paul, so one time, so, uh, there was a time in Ephesians, he was writing to the church at Ephesus. And he wrote to them. He said, I am made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God by the effectual workings. Are you seeing that? So anytime he begins to minister the revelation truth of the realities of our redemption in Christ Jesus, the gift of the grace of God kicks in. Amanandete. So you see, we have gifts that must be worked. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, it, it's not finished here. In verse 8, look at verse 8. Please, move verse 8. He said, if it is encouraging, if the gift you have is to encourage people, that's why you see that some people have grace. Anywhere they enter into, they will leave that place without somebody smiling. He said, if it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, he said, let him give generously. So that means that as people that God gave the gift of financial blessing, they are only just to be a blessing financially. Just to be a financial blessing. And every time they give, they give financially, that grace that is given to them to enhance, to work that gift of giving, immediately begin to make supply for they themselves. Are you seeing that? Once they, because of condition or circumstance, refuse to give, they themselves will now begin to struggle because the gift of the grace of God on their life to walk that giving becomes stranded, dormant. That's why you see some people, they're just struggling financially. And you will know that you can sense that this one is called to give to the work of God. Are you seeing that? But they are struggling. I know of men who are struggling financially, who are supposed to be financiers of the work of God, to sponsor ministers for the gospel. But they now went to start church. Because they have money. They can buy instruments. They can buy drum, drum set. They can buy microphone. They can buy keyboard. Those things does not make ministry. It doesn't what makes ministry is the grace that is operational on your life. The grace of God that is at work in you. Because that grace will service the gift God has given you as a member of the family of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you seeing that? You know, so it is unfortunate how a lot of Christians do not understand, you know, that we all have grace. And this grace is targeted at enhancing, working, doing, assisting, helping the gift, the different gifts that God has given to every one of us as members of the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If, if you are not a pastor, if you are not pastoring a church, but you have a job, whether it's nine to five, or you have your own personal private business, or you are joining with somebody to do business, the reason you have that job, or you are doing that business and making money, yeah, the primary reason is not just for you to have money to buy the whole world. No. The Bible said, to have food to eat and clothes to wear, be satisfied. And then you have where to lay your head, to sleep, be satisfied. Contentment is the bedrock of Christianity. The rest is for you to, you to have where to take money to help service the work of God. The work of God should never suffer in your lifetime. I'm telling you, no matter the revelations you have, no matter the level of your knowledge, no matter the level of the grace of God upon your life, the work of God should never, the work of the ministry, should never suffer in your lifetime. In, you should never. 
Anybody the Lord has called into the ministry to preach, to teach, you should make yourself available to help them financially. You know, I said this in our last broadcast. You know, I know that this generation, there is a satanic offense, hatred, and bitterness against ministers that the devil is pushing out. I'm not going to shy away from that. And I'm not going to say because that is happening, you know, and that there are facts, and that the truth of the word of God, of the scripture, should now be negated or thrown aside. No, I am not one of those that does that. Never. I am not a minister of man. I am not called to serve any man. I am called to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. By ministering the gospel, the pure, unadulterated gospel, without compromise to my generation. You know? Uh, say all these ministers are just looking for money. They just want to collect money. Look, let me tell you. Even you yourself, you need money. The reason you are praying to God is for you to get money. If you are stranded financially, you know what it means now. Uh, some of these ministers are fake. They, 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 are, they, they are not real. They are, they are fake ministers. Fake. Look, let me tell you. There are fake in everything. There are fake doctors. There are fake nurses. There are fake lawyers. There are fake bankers. There are fake, um, what else again should, should I even say? There are fake products, manufactured products. You know, most of the products, you know, from some countries are fake products. There are fake cars. There are fake mobile phones. You know, that, that, uh, name it. There are fake television sets. There are fake wristwatch. You, you know, some Rolex wrist, wristwatch. You know, are sold for hundred thousand dollars. Some are sold for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yet you can find wristwatch, Rolex, sold for five dollars. Uh, is that not fake? So, so you can't say that because there are false brethren, because that's what the Bible calls them, false ministers. Because of false ministers, you will now not, by the help of the Holy Ghost, identify through genuine ministers. And support them, finance them, then, then you are not being truthful. You are not being truthful. You are not walking the purpose to which you were called. Are you seeing that? There's a gift on your life. I mean, there's a gift that God has given to you. And there's a grace on your life to walk that gift. You must do your own. Because the night is coming where no man can walk. You know. <clears throat> Recently in my country, in Nigeria here, there is a good man, a great man, that just passed on. He just died. He's the owner of uh, uh, a, a multi-billion uh, Naira uh, um, broadcast station. You know? High Chief Raymond Dokpesi. Good man. I mean, there's testimony everywhere. People are saying how he has helped them, you know, got them job, you know. He was the first person to start an independent, independent broadcast station in Nigeria. As a matter of fact, in Africa. You know, if I'm correct. You know, good man, great man. Done himself, a, you know, a, a good name. But he just passed on. He died. Guess what? He died without taking a dime of those things with him. This great man is dead. He died without taking a dime with him. Dark communication, AIT, and ray power. Billions. This man died without taking a pin, a needle, a dime, a nickel, a penny with him. You know, he just brought home the truth again. The Bible said, naked we came. Naked we will go. But guess what? What you will go with what you will go with is yourself and the um, the amount or the level to which you allow the grace of god on your life to service to walk the gift that god gave you that's what you will go to give account to jesus for don't follow this generation this generation is confused this generation is perpetually in confusion. Their heart and mind is dark. Darkness has filled it. 
They would rather buy Mercedes Benz, live lavishly, show off their wristwatch on social media, go and buy neck chain, you know, big bogus neck chain like a dog, put it on. What, can you imagine? Somebody will wear five neck chains, five fat neck chains, gold, as heavy as they are, and he's looking at himself in the mirror. He's feeling good. That's the, that's the sense of slavery. That's somebody that is, you know, a slave of his or herself. You know, you are looking at, there's a man I saw, <laughs> I saw on Instagram. He was wearing about 35 neck chains. 35 on his neck. 35 neck chains. Then he had 50 bangles on his right hand and 50 bangles on his left hand and two wristwatches. I look at him. I say, this guy is a slave. He's a slave. You know, this devil is very wicked. He looked at this guy because he's so rich. He has so much money. The devil now looked at him and decided to make mockery of him. And now he's walking on the street with weight. Because those goals are heavy. He's walking and he's happy that he's carrying weight. He's poor in his mind. You know, he has low self-esteem. You know, he, he, he's, his heart about himself is dirty. So he's looking for something on the outside that can help to replace that low self-esteem that he has and the dirtiness of his heart. Look, I'm a proud child of God. Woo, I have everything you can have. The only thing that can bring satisfaction for anybody is Jesus in your heart. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. He said, come to you. Come to me. If you thirst. If you thirst. He said, I will feel your thirst. Jesus is the only true means of being satisfied. You can't find satisfaction with sex. You can't find satisfaction with cars. You can't find satisfaction with money. You cannot find satisfaction with traveling abroad. You can't find satisfaction with eating food. There is nothing you can physically do to feel the yearning and the satisfaction of your heart. The only true way to be satisfied is to have Jesus. Woo! A man that has Jesus has everything. A woman that has Jesus has... Woo! Abadayande. Akulabande kata. The Bible said they grumbled and they murmured unto God. Then he gave them the desires of their heart. But he sent leanness into their soul. Even though they had their physical desires, the emptiness in their heart killed them. That's what the Bible said. The emptiness, the void in their heart killed them. Woo! Abagadaya, Gasata. Some of us, have, we have come to the place of satisfaction. We have come to the place of fulfillment. Paul said, whether I have or not, I have learned to be satisfied. Because Jesus is our satisfaction. If you are angry, anytime they say that the church needs money, the man of God needs money for the gospel. If you are offended or you are angry, or you are trying to quote and unquote, stay in the flow of the world. You want to identify with the world. Let me tell you, this world is passing away. <laughs> it's a bitter truth. The world is passing away. <laughs> Woo, glory be to God. The world, this world as we know it, is passing away. Everybody had a date of birth. The date you entered into this world. Specifically, your parents knew the day you were coming. Because the day you were going to be born, your father, if your father was there, your mother knew you were going to be born that day. Some, in some cases, the doctor knew because they had to do CS to bring the baby out. So the day you enter into this world was known. The day you will leave, the day you will check out of this world, nobody knows. It might be as you are going out now, that's the end, you go out from there. It might be as you sleep tonight, you go out from the wall. It might be as you are eating, you go out from there. No, but I don't know when. God never gave us how to live. But those of us who are walking side by side with him, 
The Bible says precious is the death of his saint in his eyes. <laughs> we will not check out without him preparing our heart. That my son, you are about to come home. Glory be to God. Don't follow this world. I'm not saying you shouldn't buy those things for yourself. You can buy those, buy whatever you want. The Bible says God gave us all things richly to enjoy. Buy yourself houses. Buy yourself cars. Buy yourself clothes, wristwatches, chain, neck chain. Buy yourself anything. I don't care. Buy yourself aircraft. But do not allow the work of the gospel to suffer because of you. Because of your negligence. Don't do that. Don't do that. You know, there are so many ministers like myself who are genuine ministers teaching genuine gospel. Have you assisted us? Have you thought of helping us financially to propagate this gospel, to push it. If you like, send me all kinds of messages, abuse me, say all kinds of things. It doesn't bother me. If you do not abuse me, if you do not insult me for the gospel, then I'm not doing the right thing. You know? That's part of the thing that I'm going to... Persecution is part of the reason we are going to be rewarded by the Lord Jesus when he comes. So no minister should be discouraged that he's been insulted, castigated, abused, or persecuted for the truth of the gospel of Christ. You should take that with joy, man. With joy. He says you count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Knowing that we shall, through much persecution, tribulation, trouble, enter into the kingdom of God. But a day is coming when the night will fall. And that will be it. Look, without beating around the bush, I'm going to ask you to help support us financially. I want to be able to use the gift, the grace and the gift God gave me to push the gospel. Look, I have a, a depth of knowledge of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm saying that with all simplicity. It's a gift that God, the Lord gave me. And I have grace for it. Go and listen to my teachings. I have grace for it. I'm telling you. I want to push my gospel, this gospel of Jesus Christ, into places like Saudi Arabia. Into places like Yemen. Into places like Afghanistan. Into places like Syria. Into places like Israel. I'm telling you. Into places like China. Into places like North Korea. But guess what? These things require forms. It requires money. Help me. I beg you to help me. You know, you are now the one I have to beg. But I'm begging you in the stead of Jesus Christ. Don't wait until the day you have to beg Jesus. Let this serve as a witness. Let the Lord use you. Open your heart. You know, if you are in Nigeria, whether it's 10,000, 20, 50, 100, a million, send to us. Help us financially. If you are outside of Nigeria, anywhere you are in the world, you can send us $50, $100, $500, $1,000. Look, there are men who are giving their girlfriends, their side chicks, Money in millions. Do you know, I discovered recently, when comedians are doing comedy in Lagos, in Nigeria, you know, especially on the island, you know, I was, I was taken aback. I was flabberwhelmed, flabbergasted. When I heard that people pay one million naira to sit on a table circle of five or ten people. Table of five. They will sit around the table and they pay one million naira each just to come and listen to a comedian for between 30 minutes to one hour. And guess what? Some people, some men will go with five people. That's five million naira. You are paying to go and listen to vulgar that will make you laugh. And then when we talk about helping us, 
to push the gospel. You get offended. You become angry. You insult us. Continue. Continue. I must tell you now, your days are numbered. Hey, Apostle, are you threatening me? Yes. I'm threatening you. Do you want me to be afraid? Yes. You, you, need, you should be afraid. As a matter of fact, we should pity you. That you are not rich towards God. The, Jesus gave a proverb. He said there's a man who had made money. He had made money. Then he said to his soul, he said, I have enough. I have so much for the nearest future. He said, let me sit back and relax and enjoy that which I have gathered for myself. Then the Lord Jesus said, that night, God came and said, I want your soul. I don't want your money. I don't want your prosperity. I don't want your success, but I want your soul because I gave you that soul. I want the soul back. He said, that night, that night, his soul was required. That's why Jesus now said, what shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world only for him to lose his soul? If you are an actor, if you are a musician, if you are an athlete, whatever your profession, and you are making money, loads of money, think of your maker in the days of your youth. Think of supporting the gospel. Think of assisting men of God. Think of sponsoring the gospel. Think, please, the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, is begging you through me. He said, as though God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. The Father is begging you through me. Think of God. Think of Jesus. Now that you are alive, think of, I beg you, please. Think of Jesus. Please, I beg you. The time is short. Our days are numbered. Very soon, each and every one of us will pass away. We will exit this world. What will you tell him? Paul said, as according to my, excuse me, he said, according to my gospel, every one of us will stand to give account of himself. Everybody. You, nobody will escape it. I'm begging you to think. Please stop and think. I beg you, please. Stop and think. I'm begging you. I'm begging you in the stead of Christ. Stop and think of your maker. Stop and think of your eternal eternity. Where you will spend eternity. This life is a mirage. This life is but for a short time. But for a moment. But there is an eternity that is real awaiting you and I, whether positively or negatively, whether for heaven or hell, I beg you, you got to think about God. You have to think about Jesus. Make Jesus the Lord of your life and then apply your resources to help advance the kingdom of God. Help advance the kingdom. Sponsor the gospel. Chief, you are a chief. God has blessed you financially. Sponsor the gospel. Sponsor the gospel. I'm telling you, sponsor the gospel. The Father is begging you through me. Sponsor the gospel. You are working. You are in America. You are in Canada. In London. In Europe. Anywhere in Europe. You know, you are in, any, you are in Africa. Wherever you are. I beg you. You are into oil business. You are all magnet. You are a business tycoon. You have ship industries. You, you, you have all kinds of things are going well for you. I beg you in the name of Jesus, stop and think of Jesus Christ and help to sponsor the gospel. Because very shortly, you will exit the earth. You will exit this world and you will take nothing with you. Then you will meet your maker. Oh God. Oh God. About I under. Woo. Let me give you one more. Let me share one more scripture. You know, you don't hear messages, messages like this in churches no more. You know, everybody is being pampered and told, don't worry, everything is good, blah, blah, blah. You know, the Bible said as much as you have opportunity to do it, do it. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. I say I have so many things to share, but let me just stop here. 
In Galatians chapter 6, verse number 10. Yeah, leave it in this NIV. Galatians 6, 10. Quickly, please. Let's close here. Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. Look at it. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially do good, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Do good, especially to believers. Especially to Christians. Do good. Every opportunity you have, use it to do good. Now, this is another opportunity. I'm going to give you, everybody, another opportunity. Now, don't say Apostle James is not talking to me. Uh, no, no, he's not talking to me. He's talking to somebody else. I'm talking to you. Everybody who is listening to this teaching right now, I need you to help us financially and send us financial help. I need money. I'm not, I don't lie. I don't pretend. I need money to propagate this gospel. I want to push this thing into Saudi Arabia, into these Islamic nations, Islamic countries. Are you 